Kia ora. So far we've been looking at motion in the context of motion graphs and we've, we're quite happy now that we can represent an entire motion no matter what it is in one dimension using a position time graph and we can work out speeds and things by doing various geometrical constructions on that graph. But if we restrict ourselves to one special case, which is a period of time where an acceleration is constant, then we, there is a set of equations that can describe this motion just as well that kind of save us having to go to all this effort of drawing these graphs. And these are called the kinematic equations. So the kinematic equations, first important point, they only apply to a motion where the acceleration is constant for that entire motion. It might be zero, but it has to be the same over the whole interval of time that we're talking about. So there are five quantities that are related in the kinematic equations. Um, the first one is the length of time, delta t. Uh, that's how long the time interval is. The second one is the velocity at the start of the motion. The third one is the velocity at the end of the motion. Um, and because we know acceleration is constant, the velocity will just increase in a straight line from start to finish. Um, the fourth one is the acceleration. Again, it's a constant for that whole motion. That's what we've, that was our starting assumption. And finally, the displacement um, is, uh, is delta x, which is the displacement over the duration of that motion. So these five things can basically be related uh, in a number of different equations that each use four of these quantities. So I'm going to derive a couple of them just so you can kind of get an idea of where they come from. Won't do the whole lot. Um, and then we'll do some examples of the kinematic equations in a separate video. So first off, we've drawn here a graph of what our acceleration looks like versus time. Now we haven't really uh, used acceleration time graphs very often, um, but there's no reason why we can't have one of those. And it would look a little bit like this picture here. Um, acceleration is constant, so it's just stuck at a particular number. And I've marked on my starting and finishing time points, which means I've got my um, change in time of delta t along this axis here. Now in much the same way, that we used area under a velocity time graph to get displacement, we can get our change in velocity by calculating the signed area underneath an acceleration time graph. This is probably the only time we're actually gonna do that, but hey, so really, if we want to find the change in velocity, it'll just be this area here. Okay, so if we, if we write down what that area is, what we'll get is that our change in velocity is going to be equal to our acceleration, the height of our rectangle, times delta t. And remember, whenever we see delta anything, our change of velocity is just our final minus our initial velocity. So vf minus vi, equal a delta t. And so we can rearrange this uh, if we like. We could add vi onto both sides. I mean, we could just leave it like this because really these are all just the same kind of thing, which would give us one of our kinematic equations that says that our final velocity is equal to our initial velocity plus our acceleration times delta t. And so this is one of our kinematic equations. And what it does is it relates together four of those five quantities that I talked about before. So if we knew three of them um, and we wanted to find the fourth, we could use this equation to find it. Okay, we'll do one more because this one was relatively straightforward. We'll do one that's slightly more complicated. This time, imagine we have a, velo a velocity time graph um, for our time interval. So remember the velocity changes constantly because we've got constant acceleration over that interval. So it's going to be a straight line between our initial velocity and our final velocity. And you can see our change in velocity is going to be that distance there. Now, if you remember from our motion graphs knowledge, we know that we can calculate the displacement from this graph by working out the signed area. So again, let's color that in. And probably the simplest way to do that for this particular problem is to split it up into two pieces, a rectangle um, with a triangle on top of it. So let's just mark on some dimensions onto our picture here. So along here, we're going to have Vf minus vi, that's our change in velocity. Um, along here, we have vi. And then along the bottom, we're going to have delta t. So remember, our displacement over that time interval is just our signed area. So it equals, let's just call this maybe, what is a rectangle first? This is a1, we'll call this a1 and this one a2. 
So our displacement is just going to be the sum of those two areas, which will be, well, the rectangle has a height of vi and a base of delta t. So the rectangle area is going to be vi delta t. And the triangle area, half base times height. So half, the base is delta t, and the height is going to be vf minus vi. All right, so we've got that. And if I just rearrange this slightly, if I look at, I'm just going to collect the vi's and the vf's together. This, we're going to have half delta t vf, and then we're going to have minus half delta t vf from this piece here. So what we have overall, that will equal, uh, let's just rearrange it in a couple of steps. So I'm going to have one half vi delta t, because I have to take half of those off the starting one, plus one half vf delta t, which is vi plus vf over two times delta t. And this is an interesting one because this number here, this is my average velocity. When we have constant acceleration, it turns out the average velocity is just starting velocity plus final velocity um, divided by two. Okay, so that is another one of my kinematic equations. And I can get a third one by piggybacking on what we did in the last slide. And if I rewind to just having this equation here again, I'm going to use the VF equals VI plus A delta T that we just worked out, and I'm going to put it into that VF there. So it'll just be a couple of lines of slightly messy algebra. So my displacement is equal to VI delta T plus one half delta T times VF minus VI. Well, VF minus VI, if I just put this expression for VF in, so the VF is VI plus A delta T, then minus VI. These two will cancel off. And so what I'll get overall is I'll get VI delta T plus one half. Now all we've actually got left in that bracket is A delta T. So it's gonna be one half A delta T times delta T. So delta T squared. So this tells me that my displacement is given by my initial velocity times delta t at plus one half times the acceleration times delta t squared. So that's yet another one of the kinematic equations. So I'm not going to go through and derive all of them, but they all kind of can be found by these kinds of manipulations. You can always eliminate one or two variables and get another one of the equations that relates four of the five quantities together. So in summary, um, we have these five kinematic equations, and they often are just written down together like this. Um, so the first one is that one we just derived, vf equals vi plus a delta t. Second one is that one we just did now, <laughs> delta x or displacement is vi delta t plus half a delta t squared. And then if you want a bit of a challenge, you could see if you could figure out the other ones as well by doing similar kinds of algebra. And this one was the one that we looked at that had the average velocity times delta t in it. Okay, so the important points to remember is they relate the five kinematic quantities together. They apply where your acceleration must be constant over the whole interval. As soon as that's not true, then the kinematic equations no longer apply. So one of the first questions you have to ask yourself is, is my acceleration constant? And if it's not, then kinematic equations are at best going to give me something approximate. And each one of these equations relates four out of the five variables. So no matter which four variables you choose, one of these five equations will relate them all together. So typically you'll have some kind of word problem or some kind of situation where you have three of the quantities through the problem information and you're trying to find a fourth one. So you'd select the equation that has the four things in it and you just do a little bit of algebra to find the thing that you want. So in the next video, we're going to just run through a bunch of examples just to see how this works in practice. We'll see you then. Kakiteano.